the current labor sector, do people who have a job understand the difficulties of potential job seekers? This is very much a popular topic of discussion, in my opinion, because a lot of times people are really trying to, you know, just focus on their situation. And I understand that if someone has something, they can very much take it for granted and not realize how all of that could change within the drop of a dime in very short notice if a mass layoff were to occur at his or her company. And I think that in my case, in my perspective, I've even mentioned just quite a bit in terms of what I've experienced in terms of the labor sector and the labor market. And, you know, there are a lot of really great recruiters on Instagram and other social media sites which talk about and discuss the similar type of subject matter and the difficulties and the differences, you know, the difference in perspective between someone who's been able to get a paycheck every day for the past two years versus me, who I've, I haven't even gotten anything, barely anything at all, nothing actually, you know. So it really just goes to show is that how would the people who have a job expect someone like me or my perspective to be when I haven't had a job or vice versa, maybe if I've never had a job, how would I expect the individual's perspective to be, you know, when he or she has a job? And this difference in perspective, it just really goes to show about like how I kind of alluded to and mentioned in my other video that when you're doing a mass layoff at a company, you're creating a very volatile, you know, un insecure and, you know, ever so changing, <laughs> immediately changing environment. And it's not really, you know, like giving anyone reassurance or comfort, say, if they were part of a mass layoff and they're part of a larger group of individuals that are part of a mass layoff, because it just really shows that, unfortunately, maybe whatever company is doing this mass layoff had really, you know, overstepped and they hadn't really ended up, you know, being able to prioritize or properly envision different types of commercial needs and how these commercial needs would involve in terms of their business. And I mean, that goes for a lot of companies, you know, in many types of sectors and industry, you know, it even goes for more commercial industries like retail and things like that, to even tech, like I've talked a lot about biotech on my channel and how, despite the fact that there's this one company that I talked about based in Boston, that they secured the largest biotech IPO in history, but they're still really struggling to actually demonstrate that there's some viable source of revenue. And it holds for several other types of companies, which are either extremely, either extremely dependent upon venture capital or other external funding sources, rather than any revenue that the company itself can generate that would help propel itself forward, you know, without the, you know, without any such capital, without the support of venture capital. And I really feel like, you know, one venture capitalist, they're looking to invest in a company or make some type of very significant, you know, and, you know, stake or put some type of significant stake or acquire equity or, you know, other types of uh, ways in which value can from a publicly traded company and a publicly traded security can be communicated, you know, which would signal to us, to the public who are not part of the company, who are ex namely external to the company, that this company is really offering a lot of value and that it's really able to, you know, uh, provide, uh, you know, some novel types of solutions for difficult pressing problems that society is facing. And the fact that we've got into so many types of companies that, you know, pretty much present, you know, half-baked ideas with regards to their mission or the philosophy and how they actually are trying to reach profitability or even break even at the first place because a lot of companies haven't even broken even yet, you know, yet to, to be frank and to be honest because even they try to really downplay the fact that they had to wait so many years to even get closer to reach to reaching a break-even point, you know, with respect to EBITDA or other financial metrics that all of those companies use. And it just really goes to show is that this type of environment, it's really much making, you know, it's it, it's adding so much of a barrier between people who used to work at the same company. Say like, you know, one person over here is laid off and the other person is still at the company. Undoubtedly, you know, some people are going to feel, you know, disappointed that they're not still able to be in a position while another individual is still at the company and may be able to, re, you know, may be able to secure some type of annual raise or you know, the list can go on. There are so many things depending upon how different companies operate as well as the industry in which the companies are primarily based in, which really impact, uh, you know, things that individuals could feel, you know, if they were impacted by a mass layoff. And as we're continuing to go on, I think just the fact that there are more and more mass layoffs happening all the time and pretty much every day, 
it's just eventually going to put a lot of more people in the same boat. And, um, you know, it just really goes to show is that, you know, a lot of people, everyone would, you know, objectively speaking, everyone would love to keep their job. But the fact is that, you know, it's just so hard to anticipate what decision makers or executives at different types of companies would do in terms of having to let certain people go rather than keeping other people because a lot of times they're just trying to find a way to you know cut you know cut things you know financially as dress as much as possible so that they can just try to reach profitability because their business is struggling and you know it's an unfortunate type of environment that we're in you know there are a lot of companies who you know they don't really need to do mass layoffs at all because they're still very profitable but if a company is trying to look to reach profitability, it's a completely different situation rather than some type of company that's just trying to streamline its operations.